Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, so Mech Warrior Heroes of the Inner Sphere. I'm going to give you about 10 of what I think are important tips and tricks to help you be successful. And I have to retract some information from the other video. So, let's uh, let's talk about how to get the most out of this DLC. And I'll do a review later. Um, probably tomorrow. Anyway, so let's start with... Um, let's start out here. And let's talk about some of the... One of the new things... Well, the, the big change is the career mode, right? And so you can play basically a free-form, open-world, mech, mech warrior, merc career, okay? And that's going to necessitate that you play around with the faction system, okay? And you need to get a handle on the faction system, right? Okay, so you need to understand the, the politics of the inner sphere, not all the minutia and who, you know, which, which noble hates which noble and who's trying, but you need to understand that Davian is essentially an enemy of Karita. Okay, and they have there's a there's a house name and then there's a an empire name, and I, I get them mixed up all the time. So, you know, if you have to keep a window open or somewhere, so you because sometimes they'll call House Davian their 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 house name, and then sometimes they'll refer to them as their their political name. Okay, and I screw that up as often as as anybody. Okay. But you have to understand that Davian hates Karita. Steiner hates Karita. Um, Steiner doesn't like Merrick. Merrick doesn't like Steiner. Uh, everybody seems to hate Lau. <laughs> or Liao, or however the hell you say it. And that's important because you need to pick a, you need to pick faction alignments and you need to stick with it. Okay? Because as you get better faction with that, or, uh, as you get a better reputation with that faction you get more and more negotiation points during your missions okay it doesn't it doesn't make any sense for you to sit here and bounce between Davian and Karita and Davian and Karita because your reputation with both of them will remain neutral you need to get it up to honored to max rep to get the most negotiation points to get the most salvage to make lots of money you can see I have plenty of money and I have an absolute shit ton of mechs in storage okay i'm a mech collector i can't help myself um, and i've bought i've bought lots of i have i have several let me show you some of my um i have plenty of hero mechs this is a this is a great one great hero mech um and i have the the highlander hero mech uh, let's see here. I've got the Victor Hero Mech. I've got the Warhammer Hero Mech. The Archer Hero Mech. Now, some of these you get from missions. The Victor and the Archer are from missions. The Highlander I bought. Um, and so, you really need to work up that fantastic medium mech right here. This Wolverine uh, WVRQ. Fantastic. Um, and so, yeah, you need to you need to work on that faction. Stick with that faction. What I've done in this game is I've just I started as House Davian, okay. And so I pissed off Karita, worked up my Davian faction, and then I and then eventually I changed over to Steiner, and I worked up my Steiner reputation. Continued to piss off Karita, and I'm gonna have to make a choice. I think I'm eventually gonna have to choose between Merrick and Steiner. I don't think I'm going to be able to keep them both happy. I've royally pissed off Liao, and I don't care. Um, so, yeah, that's tip number one. Okay, so tip number two. If you're just starting Mech Warrior, I highly, 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 highly recommend that you start learning... Let me see here. Let's go here. I recommend that you start with lasers. The medium laser is fantastic, and I recommend you pick an auto cannon that is, let's just call it forgiving but effective. And I say that because the AC2 is wonderfully forgiving. 
Okay, and it has a great range. It has a great projectile speed, but it hits like a wet noodle. Okay, it just doesn't hit that hard. You need two, three, four of them to really start to chip away at armor in a meaningful way to give yourself a decent um, uh, DPS. Okay, uh, the AC2 is a, is a wonderful weapon. It's a lot of fun, but it's niche. It's a niche weapon. You have to use it very carefully. You have to know what you're doing. So I wouldn't, this is not what I would depend on. I would depend on the AC-10 or the AC-5. Okay, pick one of these. Do I, where, am I, where are my AC-5s at? Come here, AC-5s. Good lord, scroll, scroll, scroll. Okay, so the AC-5, 950 meters per second, good projectile speed. That means the drop is going to be less pronounced. It's going to be easier for you to learn to hit moving targets with autocannon rounds. It's got a max ring, a six, max ring is a 620, right? Hits for five doesn't weigh a lot. It's a good weapon. It's a good solid weapon. You can learn to use autocannons with the AC-5. You can learn to use lasers. Work on your aiming. Um, so, you know, use medium and large lasers. Hell, even small lasers on light mechs, but you got to get close. But they're, you know, small lasers are wonderfully effective, but you got to get close. <laughs> um, so either do an AC-5. I prefer the AC-10. Uh, early in the in the early game, you know, you can put an AC-10 on on an enforcer, right? Um, you can get an AC-20 onto a hunchback, but it's that's you know you're not going to get much more than that AC-20, and early in the game, this you know if you just started playing Mech Warrior, you're going to suck at aiming with auto cannons. I recommend you start with the AC-10 or the AC-5, work your way up to the autocannon 20. Now, AC-10 standard, AC-10 burst fire, I leave that up to you. Okay? They both have pluses and minuses. They both have strengths and weaknesses. The AC-10 is a single shot. The standard autocannons are a single, single round, pinpoint, front-loaded damage. So if you can hit what you're aiming at, it's devastating. However, the burst fire effect is more forgiving. So you might want to start with a burst. And of course, it's going to depend on availability in the early game. You're, you're not going to be able to pick and choose perfectly between different weapon systems. So, But the AC-10 burst fire is a really good teething weapon. Okay, Because you start, you start the burst and you're like, oh crap, I'm a little low to the left. And you can correct quickly um, and you can get most of those rounds on target. Okay, So start with lasers. Start with an AC-10 or an AC-5 and work your way up. Okay. Eventually, get up to the AC-20 single shot. That's the that's the gold standard. Um, the uh, the LBX-10 solid slug. There's your gold standard. The uh, Autocannon 5 Ultras. Fantastic weapons. Fantastic weapons. Uh, so next, I recommend that you learn to use shrms, smurms. Okay, smurms. If you can get the hang of SRMs, you can devastate your enemies. Okay, you can make uh, SRM boats, especially like the. Uh, let me see here. Let's go back here. Uh, where's my baby at? It's a stalker. She's slow, but you can make a stalker down here. That is just. That's not it. This is one. Yeah, this one. You can put four SRMs. Okay, two large lasers and four medium lasers on this this monster. And anyone who walks in front of you is dead. They're just they're just dead. You're gonna wreck them. If you don't one shot them, you're gonna cause so much damage that the next salvo wave bye bye. But SRMs are they are difficult to use correctly. Okay, um, you do want to eventually get up to Artemis on the SRMs. It makes a big difference. So uh, you know, try to learn SRMs. Try to get SRM six Artemis. On, on your or SRM4 Artemis. SRM2s I don't mess with. I don't I don't think the two packs are worth the are worth it. Um, in rare circumstances on rare chassis with rare builds can the SRMs make sense. Uh, SRM2s. So the next thing I recommend you do is we're going to talk about what to give your AI pilots. The AI in this game is bombastically stupid. Okay? It is terrible. It is really bad. You can, you, you know, you can take a rifleman and equip it with, you know, long-range weapons, and the son of a bitch will wait in and go brawl. It's infuriating. You need to give the AI <clears throat> tanky, 
versatile mechs. You'll notice I have three AS7Ds. These are for the dumbasses I work with. Okay, <laughs> this is what the, the the AI does not get to drive my Victor. The AI does not get to, get to drive my Hunchback. <clears throat> the AI does not get to drive the Black Widow. Okay, no, 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 no. Put them in a nice, well-rounded, simple mech. You know, is this the best mech in the in the world? Of course not. Is this the best loadout in the world? Of course not. But this is a flexible, effective, tanky. Uh, lance mate that you can drop you can drop at this guy or this gal and if you if you lose track of your AI mates you won't lose a hundred tons on the battlefield in most cases it'll take a while for the AI to royally fuck this up you want to have time to recover <clears throat> give them move orders get yourself sorted get the lance sorted and then maybe go back you know re-engage and you know if this guy's all banged up give him you know hold orders and stuff that's my next tip you're gonna have to micromanage your micromanage your lance mates on more complicated missions, more dangerous missions. Uh, some of the simpler missions, yeah, you ain't gotta worry about it. But um, especially some of the campaign missions, um, the uh, this last mission here, this stop the launch, is insane. I've only dropped it once. It's crazy, and I just canceled out. And I'm, I'm going to have to work on it again because it is, you know, I dropped with 400 tons. Um, you'll notice, let me show you here. Um, I have, I have, I have some pretty good pilots and they got wrecked. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's, the, that's going to take another, but so give the AI something flexible like an Orion. This is an excellent mech for your AI. Okay, it's got some short range, it's got some long range, it's got ammo, it's got, it, you know, it, it's got ammo-based weapons, it's got energy-based weapons. Uh, the Orion is tanky; it has good hitboxes. The Atlas is tanky; it has has good hitboxes. You don't have to worry so much about torso twisting in these good hitbox mechs. The Victor, you have to torso twist in the Victor. Okay, this is a much more skillful mech to run. I have screwed up and not paid attention and got my right arm blown off. And when that happens, you're in a world of shit. Okay. Um, same thing with the with the Highlander. You got to protect that right Gauss rifle. This thing is built around that Gauss rifle. It's not completely helpless when it loses the Gauss rifle, but the mech's effectiveness on the battlefield is severely limited when that right arm is gone. So, you you know you need somebody in this mech that it you know that is at least marginally competent, and that would be me. Um, who you know just try to remember every once in a while to, to twist to the right get that right arm out of the line of fire and save that right arm okay so next tip trick whatever that i would recommend you do let's come over here and take a look at this when possible uh put your ammo this ignore this this was me goofing around i don't i don't like this but um when possible get your ammo into your legs and and armor up those legs as much as possible. Your arms have to be max armor. Period. End of discussion. Unless it's a shield arm. If it's the left arm in the Centurion, you can certainly pull armor off that left arm if you want to. I, I leave that up to you. But your arms, if you have important arm arm mounted weaponry, and arm mounted weaponry is awesome. I've heard people saying that arm weapons suck. They're wrong. They're just wrong. I'm sure they're nice people, smart people, intelligent people. It's just you're just flat out wrong. Arm weapons are awesome. You have far more flex. You have far more flexibility. You have far more range of motion for your arm mounted weapons. You can hit you can hit targets almost directly above you. You can hit targets behind you because you can only torso twist. You know, I want to say to about 90 or one 100 or 110 or something. But your arms can flex almost to completely behind the mech. So the arm mounted weapons are fantastic, but you have to protect them. You have to be aware of what, you know, you, you, you watch the damage distribution on your mech. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's talk about, uh, well, let's talk about the white elephant in the room. You don't give lost tech to AI. You don't give lost tech to AI ever, 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 ever. <laughs> Your PPCs do not go in the hands <clears throat> damn it, of um, of of AI pilots, of your lance mates, okay? Artemis, Artemis 
missile systems do not go into the hands of your lance mate. Medium pulse laser. <laughs> this is all lost take. This stuff, this lost tech is incredibly rare. The double heat sinks are, they're relatively hard to come by. They're not as rare as the weapons, but they're rare. And you don't want to be losing double heat sinks because, you know, ship for brains <clears throat> took his archer and ran into brawl, his LRM equipped archer. There is an archer that you can build to brawl, and, and that, that's, that's a separate video. But anyway, so no lost tech to AI. Okay, put your eggs and put your eggs, put your armor in your legs and put your ammo in your legs and armor it. Um, let me see here. What else do we want to talk about? Uh, you want to max that armor, okay? Especially in this in this game at the beginning of the campaign, you're going to get starter. Uh, sometimes you'll get a medium mech. Or you'll get some really good light mechs, but you're gonna get you're gonna start with small mechs, and the builds on them are for the most part terrible. So you, so before you take your first mission, you need to go into those to those mechs, and you need to up armor those mechs. Um, that's one of the biggest problems in the early game. Um, some of the some of the mech loadouts they give you are just pure shit. And you need to you need to up up armor those mechs if they're going to have any chance of survival. Uh, and plus, remember, armor is a lot cheaper to repair than internal hits, component critical hits, where you you know a weapon is damaged, a weapon's destroyed, an arm is destroyed, a leg is destroyed. That's the kind of thing that's going to wreck your early game economy. Up armor your mechs. You'll get fewer internal hits. You'll get fewer internal crits. Internal crits are what cost you money. Okay. Um, what else? Let me see here. Okay. Uh, as you bounce around, you will come across in the mech market. You will see new chassis for sale. Okay. Like this. Right. It's not new to me, but and you'll look at this and you'll go, hmm. now this is a this is a shit mech, okay? <laughs> I just tell you right now, the charger is shit. Um, uh, well, I say it's shit. Quite frankly, I've never tried to fix the charger, so that might just be my bias talking. I have never faced a charger on the battlefield that even remotely scared me. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, uh, so you, you get the Zoo 6T and you're like, hmm, hmm, is that any good? Right? You don't know. Well, what you should do is you should come over here and you should exit. Okay? Right? And then you should go single player, instant action. Okay? Do, 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 and then just, you know, whatever. I, I don't care. I'm not actually going to play this. And then come in here and go to assault. And scroll all the way down here because it's a Z. The Zoo 6T. Now let's take a look at it. Go to details. And... Hmm. I don't like it. Uh, strip it take a look at... You know, what you could do here. Yeah. <clears throat> so you take a look at the mech. Take a look at the chassis. See if... See if this loadout speaks to you before you go to buy it, right? Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. So you can see I've got uh, 7,519 days. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Where was I? I'll just go here because I don't want to deal with all the other stuff. So, then we've done... Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about is... Um, you want to... Okay, so in my previous video, I said you wanted to leg mix to get better salvage. That's wrong. The game is broken. Okay, I don't think... That, and they haven't... I don't think they fixed it. There's a mod to fix it. But right now, if you leg a mech, you only have a 10% chance to get it. A salvage. If you headshot the mech, it's 90% chance. If you cave in the center torso, you got a 50-50% you got a 50-50 chance of getting the mech a salvage. Just aim center mass. Okay. You're in a mission. 
things are going crazy. It's hectic. It's it's there's all kinds of shit going on. Just aim center mass. Just wail on that center torso, cave it in, kill the mech, move on. And you got a it's a coin flip, okay? If they shut down and if you have a lot of pinpoint damage, like if you've got, you know, three PPCs. You know, sure. If you got an autocan at twenty and you're really good with it, yeah, go for that. Go for that headshot. Absolutely. Try it, you know. Um and do, 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 do. okay, one of one of the final economic uh, tip: you can sell mechs anywhere. Okay, let me show you here. Let's see. Let's just look. Just look at this this atlas. Okay, I've got. Oh no, is that sell? Oh, I just got that thing as, as salvage. That's right, I forgot about that. Okay, so look here. And if I go to sell, it's going to offer me 2 point, let's just 2.1, 2.1 million, right? Okay. So, let's go to the star map. And let's just bebop over here. Well, this is Steiner. Yeah, this is Steiner. Okay, so, so that was 2.1 million. So we'll just travel over here. And, spoiler alert, the price will be the same, okay? You can sell mechs anywhere. Anywhere, okay? It doesn't matter. So, if you, if you load up on, um, if you load up on, blah, 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 uh, do, 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 you know, mech market, sorry. So, let's go here, and you see 2.164. It doesn't change, okay? Uh, one final tip and trick. So, uh, you also have this new jobs board that you get at cantinas. You see these old, see, see these right here? These are old missions, okay? I need to dump them, okay? I'm not going to get these because this is back in a, I just I just forgot about them. I, I don't, I can't explain it. Why I brain farted on this. But these missions have been clogging up my cantina jobs board. So let's just go over here, go to objectives, Go down here and abandon. Okay, let's get these guys out of the way. Unless you see something absolutely just fantastic, which I mean, you know, it's it's a four dot heavy rifle, but I don't like heavy rifles. So that's just me. I've seen people that like them, and you know, whatever. Um, you see here, this this isn't particularly good, and this is this is back in a low level area. So bye bye. Okay. So anyway, guys, that's the new tips and tricks for Mech Warrior, uh, Heroes of the Inner Sphere, and um, that's all I have now. So thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.